Welcome to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today we are here at Investire with the co-CEO and co-founder of Investire, Lukas Weber. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Welcome back to a new episode of The Startup Show. Two things before we get into the show. Number one, thank you very much to the Nana platform for providing me with a short notice videographer. Unfortunately, mine couldn't come today, so thank you very much for this. Number two, many people ask me how I get in touch with all of these high-profile people. Here's one hack. I signed up to their newsletter, responded to their email, and here we are today. So, Luca, thank you very much for taking the time. As sure. usual on the startup show, you have two minutes to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm uh, Lucas. I'm a co-founder of Investeria. Uh, my background is in IT. I studied computer science at ETH, but then always worked sort of at the interface between uh, financial services and uh, computer science. First, uh, I worked for Goldman Sachs in London very briefly, but then went into consulting. Had two companies built up, one in uh, e-commerce uh, and one in web development that was very early on during my uh, time of studies. I like to build stuff. Uh, that's probably <laughs> one of the reasons why I went into IT in the first place, because that's something that's it's very creative and fast. But now, you know, building this company is also teaching me a lot about other disciplines. I, I like that a lot. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm sure you see like a lot of what you said, Goldman Sachs, consulting. What do you see the main difference, let's say, between entrepreneurship and corporate life? I think it boils, boils down to ownership, um, which is one of the things that, that I think drives people most. If you really feel that this is something that you want to build and that that's the thing that keeps you up at night versus you know, some sort of pressure that someone else is putting on you. So I, I think that's that's the, the glow in people's eyes that, mm -hmm. that comes from ownership. And I think that's that's really powerful. Sure. Let's get into the meat part of the show, Investir. What's it all about? A huge venture capital funds for sure here in Switzerland. Maybe you can tell what's, what's your twist to the venture, venture capital world. So Investir is an investor in early and growth stage startups. Um, essentially, we're a bit different from, from a fund. Um, what we do is we put together a syndicate of both private people, uh, private individuals, and institutional money per deal. We bring together the best of both worlds. So private people have a lot of knowledge, a lot of, a lot of network. They put in their own money, so that's very powerful. Um, we wrap that up and we, we add uh, institutional money to that, which can provide a lot of leverage in terms of, of, of funding also in later stage rounds. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. Obviously, we're as a, as a platform, uh, we're also very, very much network driven. We have around 10,000 or more people on the platform, 2,000 accredited investors, so that there's a lot of know-how and network in that that we try to leverage to the max. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you probably have a lot of deal flow, uh, a lot of startups that apply to or looking for investment. How do you separate or like how do you find this needle in the haystack that you say like, well, those are the ones that we want to fund. Uh, I looked at your portfolio, you had some very interesting there. How, how do you find like the, the, the unicorns? There's essentially three three sources um, uh, of, of deal flow for us. So us being a platform, there's obviously startups that come on the platform that use the platform to gain visibility, uh, both to the outside world, but also to, to our team. So entrepreneurs coming to us, that's one obvious source. The second source um, is the investor community. So there's a very a number of very easy ways how investors can kind of push companies onto the platform even without asking them, you know, just sending that in as, as deal flow from their side. Many people do that, especially if they don't have too much time themselves doing due diligence. So they, they say, look, I, I might put in 50,000, but can you please look at the deal? If you then turn around and do the deal, I'll be happy to participate. So that's the second source um, of deal flow. And the third one is our own team. So we have uh, investment managers that do nothing else but just uh, doing research um, on the market. Uh, screening all the spin-offs, uh, all, the, all, all the people that are uh, starting up fresh, um, winning awards and all of that. Mm -hmm. And all of that essentially is putting into the platform. And then how do we select them? Yeah, that would have been my follow-on question. Exactly. <laughs> the criteria that you use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before we select, yeah, what are the criteria? We are, we are quite broad. So um, unlike a fund that's very, very, or many funds are very specific, say we only do software as a service or enterprise or whatever, uh, we're fairly broad. We're essentially excluding um, extremely capital intense stuff, uh, like for instance, drug development. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're quite industry agnostic. The reason being that we also have a, a broad community with different people that are interested to invest in different things. Our criteria are, are essentially quite, quite broad. We're not doing seed, so we're, we're starting with early uh, so that means if you're an online business, etc., you need to have significant traction already. If you are a high-tech spin-off from ETH, for instance, you've made it to a successful prototype, 
-hmm. and then you're going to need your first million to build that into a marketable product, for instance. Yeah. So that's roughly the stage. Because uh, our investor community has grown and because we also have institutional money to pair it with, we've also grown into growth stages. So we're, we're also kind of following on much more today uh, than we did, for instance, 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. So that's roughly the, the type of deals we for do. Sure, for sure. Um, the way we select them, so we have this uh, huge advantage of having the platform and the community. Um, we have an algo that, that scores a number of signals that are happening on the platform. This is not fully automatic, of course, or that part is automatic, but that's not you know, doing our deal decisions. That's just an input to know how to distribute our manual labor because reading business plans, meeting with people is extremely expensive. Um, so we try to focus that on the ones that are kind of bubbling up. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of different different signals playing into that. There's social signals from the platform weighted by you know the strength of these investors. There's uh, there's a lot of components like you know who's on the board of that company, are they currently hiring? There's about 20 different factors playing into that. Once something pops up, um, there's one person from our investors team who who will typically reach out. So most of the deals we do are because we're reaching out. We say when are you doing your next round, and we'd like to be part of that. And that's how it starts, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I hear that a lot of times, you know, like the actually good deals come out from, from the outbound where you actually reach out to people. Um, I do also hear, though, that that makes the valuation a little bit more expensive. Is that something that you agree with? Or is that that some, you know, like some other investors is like, at the moment, like you are showing, like, let's say a certain um, interest in a company, like automatically it will be more expensive to invest in that company. The simple fact of reaching out Probably not, but I think there's certainly a strong correlation that the, that the people or the companies that you reach out to, um, they, they tend to also have uh, other investors that reach out to them. I mean, right. obviously, uh, everyone tries to get into uh, the, the best companies, and there starts also to be some, some competition here in, here in Switzerland, also the neighboring countries that we, that we look at, and that's certainly more happening on those deals. Right. And even more important is it that, that we as, as a platform, as an investor, can can show the, the kind of network we can bring to the table and the value we can produce in, in sales, in recruiting, etc. these topics post-deal. For sure, for sure. You quickly uh, already gave me the segue into, into the Switzerland uh, venture capital market. Where do you see like in startup investments going in the next, let's say, five to ten years? We've just done an internal study on how this, specifically Switzerland, is moving. Uh, the part of, of, of venture that's interesting to us, which is only a, a part of Switzerland, is actually growing quite strongly. At, Roughly 40%. So um, that, that there's a lot of really good dynamics in in, in, in this market here. Uh, we see still a lot of strength in 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 the in the universities we have. So there's a lot of really good high tech mm -hmm. that also uh, investors from from the US or from from many other uh, places that have high powered startup hubs that 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 still like to come and also invest here in in, in okay. Switzerland. It's a very good trend. So uh, trend is rising rising venture venture funding. You could say. Yes, yes, for sure. Very good. I like to give like some kind of like gem at the end of my video usually. So if you can give, let's say, someone who a lot of students are watching this, this video, someone wants to go into venture capital, um, what would you suggest them to do in terms of you know, boosting their career? What could be a good idea uh, today to get into um, venture capital? So if you want to be on the, on the investor side and yes, not on the yes. startup side. Well, two things. I think one of the best things to do is to build your own company first. I think that the people who have seen the pain uh, <laughs> and the challenges, they're, they're also going to be uh, much better investors and also much better at picking things. Yeah. Um, I think this is also something that, that startups that work with us appreciate a lot, that we are a very young and pragmatic firm and the way we talk is, is it's very much eye to eye and we, we like to you know, bring companies and people forward. So I think if you want to get into venture capital, I think bringing experience from building ventures is, is obviously key. One other thing, you should come work for us because we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing a lot of deals. Like if you go to a fund, maybe you'll end up doing a lot of due diligences, but in the end, you'll end up doing half a deal per year or, or sure. two deals. So, so we've, we've done 53 rounds in the last couple of years. We're speeding that up. So if you really want to gain experience on, on actually doing deals, negotiating terms, knowing you know, what it takes to get into a deal, you should go to a place where a lot of deals are happening. Right, right, for sure. So that's a great wrap. Basically, uh, start your own company or come work for Investia. <laughs> or or first, first one and then the other. Right? <laughs> Luca, thank you very much for your insights. I really appreciate it. And to you, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for tuning in. Again, Nano Platform, the guys behind the scene, thank you very much for coming today and have a good day.